Tanqua Art Space 2023. Daphna, right? Yes. So uh, now we are talking to Daphna, a young woman from Israel. Daphna, it would be great if you could introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit who you are. Um, so I'm 35 years old and I'm a sculptor. I studied art a few years ago and after that had a few exhibitions and did mostly kinetic sculpture. Um, and lately I, I kind of feel like um, I want a different approach in my art something that I will feel more convenient and relaxed in the making of the art and something that will involve more natural materials. In the past few years, I started also writing poetry. Uh, I wasn't sure that if it was poetry, <laughs> so I was just playing with it and it was all kept in my drawer <laughs> or my computer. And in the past year, I found myself writing almost all the time, spent nights uh, just writing, and I reached the point I had so many poems, so I realized this is also something I do, and I should give that its respect. Right now I'm trying to find a way to combine the different arts. So what brought you here to this art residency program in the Tankwa? So um, to cut a long story short, um, I guess around um, when COVID uh, started, the whole world changed, but my personal life made a very big turn. I didn't know that at the moment, but it took me a while to realize that from now on, it's not going to be the same. Um, and I'm talking about my personal life, the way I live, and also the way my body handles reality and environment. So I moved from the city, which I grew up in, which is a big city, noisy, stressful place. Although I love it, it's very stressful. I moved to uh, the desert in Israel. I lived there uh, six months and I felt like it's the right thing for my body. But I was a student too, so life was, were busy, life was busy and I couldn't stay there. But ever since, I feel like I'm displaced. I'm not in the right place. I don't feel like myself anymore. It's like I lost my own self. I was working on an exhibition that no one could see because of Corona. <laughs> and I was looking for soil. That was a big part of the exhibition, of the sculpture. And I asked people around in the desert, where can I find red soil? And they would address me to places that are um, like a, a sightseeing, like a, almost like a sacred place. Um, I couldn't take the soil from there and made me realize that actually everything I use in my sculptures, in my sculptures are, is, is taken from nature, from earth. And I started feeling a little guilt using all these materials, buying them. So I wanted to develop a different ap approach where I use what's around me or at least try to n make as little damage to nature as I can, which was a very big challenge for me because I used mechanisms and kinetics until then. Then I started to develop the idea of creating casts or sculptures that are much smaller and from more natural materials and wanted to just display it in the desert so everybody could see it, um, not even knowing who's the artist. Exactly at the same time, I thought, I really want to go to Africa, any country in Africa, um, for many reasons, which I won't explain now, but I searched for a way to go through art, and I just found it, and I found the exact thing I was looking for without even knowing that it exists. 
So now we are here since almost three days, right? Mm -hmm. And the first two days, even today, uh, most of the participants spent with finding the right spot uh, for what they, whatever it is, what what they want to create here. So for you, how important is the spot? And what did you see the last two, three days? What did you hear about it? What did you learn? This is a great question for me <laughs> because I already knew that I don't really need a specific spot. I knew I was going to make a sculpture that is going to move around, like travel around. It's actually inspired by the tumbleweed. So I want it to behave like a tumbleweed, which means it, it is carried by the wind and it's just rolling around until it gets stuck at I don't know, a bush or a, a rock where it's um, planting its seeds. So all I, want, all I wanted is to find an, an open space that would be reasonable for this tumbleweed to pass through. So I wasn't ex actually looking for a specific spot, but an area. And that was a more difficult task because it's bigger. I mean, I don't just need one place, one rock, I need, there is too many options. There are too many options. This is where I guess JP came into the picture and I realized I can advise him, take his advice. So just to mention, JP is one of, is our actually our host here and he has been taking us around for the last uh, three days. So looking around at the plants and hearing a little bit here and there about um, indigenous plants and the ones that were brought over from other countries, I developed this curiosity and wanted to add this um, idea to my work as well because I want to refer to the people who were the first to live on this land. So I actually told him, I asked him, where would it be reasonable for a tumbleweed to travel around here? And he said, well, it's rare, but I did see some of them. And he pointed the areas and we made this tour today. He had plenty of um, smart things to say and to add to my vision, uh, referring to whether it, or, or not it should um, be part of nature or stick out, whether or not it should be on a black surface since the work is pretty bright and has white grayish colors, or whether it, it should be traveling around and, in, and just get stuck in the river area. I had too many questions. I was so confused because the whole space looked relevant. So what kind of smart or wise advice has he given you? First of all, there are the directions of the wind <laughs> that he knows just any behavior of any natural resource around here. He knows every stone, every hill. So he would actually focus on whether or not it's going to be a permanent work or something that is going to dissolve or because it's made of, out of paper. And the smart idea was that if it's to, to actually choose two locations, one would be for the work to travel around and the other would be for the work to stay permanent. When it's traveling around, we should have a darker surface for it to really be clear in the sight. And he had this idea for uh, a video that you could just see the hill and suddenly it will pop up from the horizon and then it will reveal itself to us just like the original tumbleweed. And on the other hand, if it stays permanent, if it survives, then we should choose an area where it would be part of nature, look like it's another bush. And we were actually thinking about the same location because on the, first, on the second day when we went to sundown, I was looking downhill and I was um, amazed by the shapes on the ground. 
and I told myself, this is where I imagine my tumbleweed rolls around, but I couldn't. This is a sacred place. I can't put my work here. And then he said, you can do it in the sound down loop. I said, this is exactly what I wanted, but I was ashamed, like um, shy to ask for that. So he said, it's a big area. We'll find your spot. After hearing all this, after seeing all this, what what importance has the fact that you have to have that you have to find the right spot? Is it an issue or is it no issue at all? Actually, this is actually the question that was with me the whole day. I think that the most honest answer will be to say I'm still ha holding that question. I feel like I will hold that question until the last moment. Since it's a, a nomad, <laughs> a traveling work, well, you could think it could be anywhere. On the other hand, I don't want it to be foreign for the environment. I don't want it... At first, I imagined it in a photo, very clear image, and you could see the horizon line, the landscape, and this is the main player, you know? But now I'm being more modest and I feel like, no, it's not the main player. This is the main player. What's around me? The bushes, uh, the curves, the soil, the rocks, and this should be their friend. So what, whatever you're asking this question, I would like to find out what the answer is. So I need to tumble with it and just feel. Yeah. So the last thing I would like to hear from you is uh, these three days here, how would you describe the impact this emptiness, this huge space has had on you? I feel like home. <laughs> I feel like home more than I imagined. Um, when they told us to just take a walk alone, uh, see no one around us, find our way back to the camp. I had no fear. Um, I felt like I need to do it every day to feel like myself again. And hearing people's experiences and people being so worried and stressed, I guess it made me realize that I should live in this type of environment and it really had a big influence on me. I even told a friend back home. After this day, there's no other option for me. Um, I don't feel lost. I don't feel disconnected from earth or society. I feel like I have such a silent place to listen to myself and nature again. So I can't imagine living here. I mean, living, <laughs> going away, you know. Um, yeah, it feels like this is the way we're, we're supposed to live. So I would love to look forward to speak to you again in a couple of days, maybe towards the end. Mm -hmm. Maybe you've found your spot by then. Thanks a lot. Hey.